Greetings, everyone. My name is Sheila E. E. Song, and I'm the Engagement Director at Giffords Courage to Fight Gun Violence. I'm excited to be here with all of you today to announce the launch of our national coalition, Giffords Gun Owners for Safety, a group of 40,000 plus gun owners in all 50 states and Washington, D.C. They value gun ownership and they want to reduce gun violence. Giffords Gun Owners for Safety includes hunters, collectors, parents, veterans, law enforcement, and many more who have committed to keeping families and communities safe. Our inaugural chapters in Colorado, Texas, and Minnesota have set a solid foundation for the expansion of our coalition, and we are proud to announce new chapters in Michigan, Virginia, and Wisconsin. Keeping the momentum going, Giffords Gun Owners for Safety plans to expand to all 50 states and Washington, D.C. in the near future. Our research indicates to us that a vast majority of gun owners support common sense gun laws that save lives. In 2021, this new national group will focus on securing universal background checks at the federal level while upholding sensible gun ownership. That is why we are all gathered here today to showcase a diverse group of gun owners that support common sense gun laws and share with you how you can get involved. Now, before I turn it over to our fearless leader and former to our fearless leader, excuse me, former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords. Here's a short video which showcases how we all got here today. What is courage? What does it look like? Courage shows truth to power and stands its ground. It's walking out. It's sitting down. It's marching towards something greater. Courage is telling your story even when it's hard to speak. Courage looks like this. Good evening, everyone. I'm Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords from Southern Arizona. You know, you can either complain about something or you can try to fix it. I will always extend my hand across the aisle to do what's right for the American people, to build consensus, and to get the job done. Earlier today, a number of people were shot in Tucson, Arizona. Arizona Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, wounded in an assassination attempt just about two weeks ago, is about to take the next big step along what's expected to be a long road to recovery. It takes courage to keep going, especially when it feels impossible. And to witness the return of our colleague, who is the personification of courage, Congresswoman Gabby Giffords. And to the Republic for which you stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. It's standing up and finding your voice again. Courage is speaking out. Courage is saying, we can do better. And knowing no problem is too big to fix. Now I'd like to introduce all of you to our fearless founder, former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords, a gun owner herself and a tireless advocate of gun violence prevention, along with sensible gun ownership. Stopping gun violence takes courage. The courage to do what's right, the courage of new ideas. I've seen great courage when my life was on the line. Now is the time to come together, be responsible. Democrats, Republicans, everyone. We must never stop fighting. Fight, fight, fight. Be bold, be courageous. The nation's counting on you. Thank you very much. Wow, what motivating words from Gabby Giffords herself. We do indeed need courage to move the needle on common sense gun laws. It's almost time to hear from our gun owners on the ground, but first we'd like to introduce you all to Giffords Gun Owners for Safety in this short video. I'm a gun owner. I'm a gun owner. I'm a gun owner and we're committed to, to gun, gun safety. safety. Gun ownership is woven into our history as a country, a fundamental right for generations of people from all backgrounds and political affiliations. Giffords Gun Owners for Safety unites a community of hunters, sports shooters, and collectors who understand the need for common sense gun laws to help keep us all safe. 
As gun owners, we value the right to own a gun and also understand our responsibility in ensuring all guns are used and stored properly. It's time to use our voice to push for solutions that will save lives and preserve our rights. We believe the Second Amendment is an important right. We also believe our community should be safer from gun violence. If you only listen to the corporate gun lobby or partisan politicians, you'd think these two values are at odds. But gun owners from all 50 states are joining together to say that gun rights and gun safety go hand in hand. Responsible gun owners across the country are showing that we're not as divided as we seem. As a responsible gun owner, I am committed to gun safety. Join us. Join us. Join us in the fight for gun safety. Now, you're probably wondering how you can get involved. You might be a gun owner in a state that I didn't mention earlier. Um, so if you'd like to join us in the fight to reduce gun violence, you can text the gun owner to 34131. Again, if you'd like to join us in the fight to reduce gun violence, please text the gun owner to 34131. If you'd like to get more involved in an already established chapter or start a new chapter, please email us at gunowners at giffords.org. Gunowners at giffords.org. All right, now I'd like to transition us to our panel of gun owners who've been working on the ground with common sense gun owners in their respective states. I'll say a few words about each panelist and then I'll ask them to briefly introduce themselves and how they got involved in the gun safety and gun violence prevention movement. First, we have Vic Bencomo. Vic is one of the first gun owners that Giffords Gun Owners for Safety connected with. Vic is a father, veteran, and gun violence prevention activist based in Denver, Colorado. Now I'll pass it over to Vic to further introduce himself to everyone. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, before I introduce myself, I would like to say thank you to former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords for making today a reality. Two years ago, Gabby personally asked me to find the courage to drive this initiative in Colorado. In that short period of time, we have accomplished so much. As a gun owner herself, Gabby knew in order to have a real conversation around gun violence prevention, she needed to find gun owners that also believed in the need to pass sensible gun legislation. My name is Vic. I'm a responsible gun owner, I'm a parent, a hunter, I have a concealed weapons license, and I, write, I retired after 21 years of service in the United States Navy. I'm the president of Giffords Gun Owners for Safety Colorado chapter. We're a moderate group that you sports shooters, collectors, and veterans. We support the Second Amendment and reasonable common sense gun laws to reduce gun violence. Our group is diverse, and we're an all-inclusive group of gun owners. We believe that gun rights and gun safety go hand in hand. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Vic. Next, we'll hear from Shannon Flores, a mother, former school teacher, and ninth generation Texan. Shannon, please share a bit, of, a bit more about yourself to everyone. Thank you, Sheila. And thank you to everyone else here today, especially Gabby. I am very excited to be a part of today's discussion. I am a proud Texan, so of course we have a long family history with guns as a family of hunters and ranchers. I've got fond memories of shooting clay pigeons with friends in high school in our small town. My dad is also a West Point graduate and served in the US Army for 24 years. So his training played a role in the way that I use guns. As an adult, I married a gun collector and an avid hunter. My wife, Scarlett, and I still go hunting on our family ranch every deer season, which is coming up soon in early November. I unfortunately have a few very personal reasons why I'm here today, and I support the work that Giffords is doing to prevent gun violence. Suicide, mass violence, and our kids. So my family lost my uncle to suicide by gun in my early 20s. And of course, suicide attempts by gun are almost always fatal. I talked about my dad earlier. He was working at Fort Hood U.S. Military Base in Colleen, the 2009 mass shooting there, which was a very scary experience for my family, especially my mom. I was obviously also very upset by the 2016 Pulse nightclub mass shooting in Florida, as it happened at a gay nightclub and could have easily happened here in Houston at one of the gay frequent back when we had date nights COVID, of course. But you're in the classroom as a high school teacher, 
Our twins were five in kindergarten, and it was the year of the Santa Fe High School mass shooting in a neighboring school district. Our district had a few scares after the Santa Fe incident, and schools were put under a lockdown. When you have to explain to five-year-olds about the need for active shooter drills and the news of a school shooting, it is too much. I, of course, had participated in lockdown drills with my students for years, with banging on the door and people wiggling the handle. But my perspective really shifted when I saw the stress that it caused our twins. We really need to be doing more to protect all kids and teens from these kinds of stressors. That's why I'm speaking out as a gun owner, but most importantly, as a worried mom. I want things to change. Thank you for sharing, sharing all of that with us today, Shannon. Um, our next panelist is John Gold. John is a 43-year-old resident of Michigan who was a trained private pistol and gun safety instructor. John, please share with, share with yourself to everyone. Thanks, Shula. Um, my name is John Gold. I'm the Michigan president of uh, Giffords for Gun Safety. I'm here today for a few reasons. Um, Gabby Giffords' heroism is one. Um, a lot of data is two. And most of all, and some is trauma, and that's three. Um, I am a transcender of gun violence myself. And I have unfortunately experienced three firearm suicides in my close group of friends in the last four years, including my college girlfriend, a martial arts training partner, and a friend, a very close friend's father. And uh, having examined that data, having seen Gabby's heroism, and having experienced my last four years, I knew it was time to stand up and, and try to make a difference in the safety movement when it comes to firearms. Thank you, John. Finally, y'all will hear from Whitney Tautenhoff, high school senior based in Boulder, Colorado, who is both a gun violence prevention activist and biathlete. Whitney, please share a bit of yourself to everyone. Hi, everyone. As Sheila said, my name is Whitney and I'm a high school senior in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, I joined the Colorado chapter of Gun Owners for Safety about a year ago. Um, because I've done biathlon since I was a kid. Um, for those of you who don't know, you may have seen it on the Olympics. Biathlon is a sport that is a race involving cross-country skiing and rifle shooting. And um, because of biathlon, my family has always been a gun-owning family, uh, but we never really felt like the NRA spoke for us as gun owners. So I was really excited uh, when I discovered Giffords Gun Owners for Safety. Thank you, Whitney. What an amazing and talented, diverse panel of gun owners we have here today. Let's jump right into the substance of the great work that they've been doing for the last few years. We'll start with Vic. Vic, Colorado Gun Owners for Safety have been trailblazers when it comes to organizing common sense gun owners and creating change legislatively. Can you share some of the work and success you all have had over the last few years? You know, as a member of Giffords Gun Owners for Safety, we strive to unite gun owners. As gun owners, we have more in common than the special interest groups want us to believe. Owning firearms has been woven into our democracy for over 200 years. Our group wants to ensure that that tradition continues in a safe and responsible manner. We aim to reduce gun violence through advocacy, public education, and policy change. Our members personally meet with each of our state legislators and federal legislators to craft sensible gun legislation. We testify for and at times against gun laws at our state and federal levels. During this election, many of us were called upon to ask our presidential candidates the hard questions around gun violence prevention in their own town halls. Last year, I had the honor to testify in front of Congress for the Gun Violence Prevention Task Force in support of HR or eight, universal background checks. Responsible gun owners agree that background checks are fundamental in keeping guns out of the hands of criminals. As a responsible gun owner, we want to shift the narrative of gun ownership. We are leading the conversation in our communities. We're the ones out there meeting with our community leaders, our survivors, in hopes of changing the culture. We want to ensure that Americans are informed about what makes them safer and inspire them to fight for safer communities. 
the gun lobby often paints those who support gun legislation and gun safety as anti-gun. It's a false claim. We are proud gun owners who support reasonable gun ownership. As responsible gun owners, we want to ensure that there are common sense gun laws to protect American citizens. We promote res responsible gun ownership through firearm safety, and we hold special interest groups accountable for their actions. As a moderate group, we do not feel that the NRA speaks for us. Gifford's Gun Owners for Safety gives responsible gun owners a platform. It gives us a voice. We conduct classes such as Guns 101 to educate new gun owners and fire with firearms and safe handling of those firearms. We believe that education and firearm training will make responsible gun owners safer. Look, we understand that our country is in the midst of a crisis, that the crisis is heartbreaking every single day. As a combat veteran, I've seen violence. In Iraq, we understood that our country, serving our country came with inherent risks and we put our lives on the line. No one should feel they live in a war zone. You know, I consider myself a patriot. And sometimes as a patriot, we must fight for the greater good of others. After returning from Iraq, I was appalled at the amount of gun violence occurring on our streets of America and became very disenfranchised with the lack of action from our legislators. These are not Republicans or Democrats being killed. These are Americans. That's why I decided to exercise my First Amendment right and use my voice to fight in favor of gun violence prevention. As a veteran, I'm going to see my federal service members taking their lives at a catastrophic rate. 20 veterans commit suicide every day. It's over 6,000 veterans a year. 60,000 veterans in 10 years. At this rate, we're on par to lose more veterans to suicide than we were or have been killed in action since the Vietnam War. As a combat vet, as a combat medic, my fellow, my fellow veterans knew me as Doc. We served in the combat zone together. And that's the reason why more than once my phone has rang. And on the other end, there's a veteran suffering from a mental crisis asking me to help them, asking me to help them take their guns away. That is why our group testified in favor of extreme risk protection orders last year in Colorado. And I'm so proud that we've been able to have a part in ERPO becoming law. If you're not familiar with extreme risk protection orders, it's a law that allows temporary removal of firearms for those that find themselves in a mental crisis. As I mentioned before, we're a moderate group of gun owners that believe in the Second Amendment and are fighting to do what the special interests and in our legislators have failed to do. That's to make America safer by passing sensible gun legislation. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing all of that with us, Vic. I mean, I think you, you did a really great job of painting a picture of what it looks like when you've got folks that are working towards a common cause, common sense gun laws, and you're working in the state legislature to actually move legislation. So thank you for sharing that. Um, we're gonna stay with Colorado for a little bit and we're gonna transition to Whitney. Um, so Whitney, like Vic said, you know, Colorado is uniquely positioned to continue to be a leader in the gun safety movement. And it's clear that the residents of your state want to reduce gun violence. So you're a young person in Colorado in high school, like you mentioned earlier, um, and you've committed a lot of your time to gun violence prevention advocacy. What has your experience been like and how would you uh, encourage young people to get involved? Yeah, so um, thank you. I do, I really think it's important that we open up the dialogue to young people um, in terms of gun violence and gun violence prevention, um, because there's understandably a whole lot of anxiety built up around school shootings and just gun violence in general and students' personal safety. Um, and I think that students oftentimes end up feeling really helpless, um, like school shootings are just these ever-present threats that they have no way of actually preventing. Um, but getting involved in gun violence prevention can, uh, and actually um, becoming informed about gun safety laws that uh, have the power to save lives, I think can be a really power, uh, a powerful thing um, for students to do. So um, also as students, uh, I think we represent a very important perspective um, in the gun safety conversation. And it's super important that that perspective doesn't go unrecognized. Um, just like we need gun owners at the decision-making table, we need students at the decision-making table. Um, and I know that that's something that Giffords and um, particularly gun owners for safety um, really welcomes and makes accessible to students, which I think is great. 
Um, as for my personal experience, you know, I just remember um, the first week of my junior year of high school, in every single class, we practiced lockdown procedures. And um, the first day of school, there I was, like, crouched under my desk, um, or in, under the counter in my physics classroom, and just really feeling like, you know, it's crazy, like, how much we've normalized this, and the fact that, you know, it's the first day of school, um, and this is what's happening. So I just, I came home uh, at the end of the week and I was pretty uh, frustrated and exhausted by that. You know, I've lost track of how many school shooting scares even um, have happened in my own school district since I um, became a high school student. And, you know, Colorado especially has just been hit so hard uh, that I think for me, it just really got to the point where like, I feel that as a student, I have so much invested in this. And as a gun owner, uh, I actually have a responsibility to be involved in the, e in the effort to stop this from happening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Whitney. I mean, you really painted the picture for what, you know, Shannon mentioned earlier, you know, the experiences like in, in, in high schools and middle schools and elementary schools across the country. Um, we're going to transition a little bit um, over to Shannon and, and, and the state of Texas. So Shannon, Texas has had its fair share of high profile mass shootings and, you know, too many communities um, struggle with daily gun violence every single day and every single year. Uh, Texas lawmakers go back to session in January of 2021. And, you know, in recent years, there have been dozens of gun safety bills that have been introduced in Austin, the state capital. However, the state legislature hasn't really moved on the issue. So you've been organizing gun owners in Texas this year. What are some of the challenges advocates have faced to move legislation and how do we change that moving forward? Yes, Sheila. Um, we had four highly publicized mass shootings in Texas in just the last three years. Shootings while people were at the movies, shopping on a weekend, going to school, worshiping at their church. And yet lawmakers have really done nothing to make it better. We have a unique situation in Texas. Legislatures are only in session every two years. So we're currently in an off year. The last session in 2019, a few strong gun safety bills were filed with the potential to make a difference. And they didn't even get a committee hearing. The closest we came to a good bill for safe storage. Um, it started in the house. One of the topics closest to my heart is firearm storage and preventing children from accessing guns. We have three kids under the age of 10. And as responsible gun owners, these are steps my wife and I take to keep our family safe. The Safe Firearm Storage Campaign Bill passed the House Public Safety Committee with bipartisan support. Republicans and Democrats agreeing in Texas. I know it's a unique situation, but even still, it didn't move beyond that. The Senate version of the same bill didn't even get a hearing. The bill would have created a $1 million public outreach campaign for gun safety. We have a really well-known campaign, campaign here in Texas, iconic really, Don't Mess With Texas. It's an anti-littering campaign to raise awareness. This would have been something similar just surrounding storing firearms safely. Safe storage keeps children from accessing guns. It helps prevent unintended shootings and it could stop a loved one considering suicide from having access to a gun. Suicides are an impulsive act, and if of course, of course, if accessible, it's most likely going to be fatal. And a worrisome trend is that youth suicides are increasing. The CDC reported the suicide rate of children ages 10 to 14 nearly tripled between 2007 and 2017. 10-year-olds are increasingly committing suicide. To me, this is heartbreaking. Our twins are just eight. What's upsetting to me is that we can prevent losing more Texas children by working to educate the public through campaigns like this bill proposed. And yet lawmakers in Austin refuse to even bring the bill up for a vote. But the very exciting news is that now we have this active coalition of gun owners across the state who are raising their voices. We have Republicans and Democrats, veterans, an NRA trained instructor. We have self-described conservatives, liberals, progressives, all working together to create change. A 
Of course, organizing in the pandemic has been hard. We've had to, been, to be really creative. We've had virtual meet and greets to get to know members. We've hosted educational webinars, organized contactless political outreach with lawmakers, sending virtual messages, mailing handwritten postcards, and members even submitted written committee testimony. Sheila, I'm really happy to say that our Texas chapter of gun owners is ready for January. We will be working closely with our partners in the Texas Coalition to Reduce Gun Violence. It's a group of dedicated organizations all working together to raise awareness to help pass laws. But what we really need is as many people as possible to pressure lawmakers to do the right thing. And that's what we're hoping to do. Thank you so much, Shannon. That was a that was a great response, and you really kind of walked us through, um, you know, some of the challenges in a state where you've got a lot of gun owners and you've got a lot of people that care about this issue, but you've got you know state legislature and elected officials that aren't willing to move the needle. And and thank you for sharing with us some of your experiences and what you all plan to do moving forward. Um, we're going to transition over to Michigan, and we're gonna we're gonna uh, speak to John for for a few minutes. Uh, Michigan is one of our newest gun owner for safety chapters. And we're really excited for all the great work that uh, Michigan will do in the next few years. Um, we all know that Michigan is just one of those states that's always in the limelight and is it's just always really, really important, whether it's an election year or not. So, John, can you uh, can, can you explain to us why Michigan is uniquely positioned to be a leader on the issues of gun safety and, and gun violence prevention? Sure, Sheila, thanks. Um, Michigan has a rich history. It's a treasure trove of responsible gun owners. Despite recent headlines, Michigan has a rich history of being a great place to go hunting. And there's an incredible self-defense community here as well, full of teachers and trainers, all of whom are pushing responsible gun handling, gun safety, and gun ownership. Um, Michigan is truly a, a battleground state. Uh, while we elected Democrats for governor and attorney general and secretary of state, we have a Republican majority in both our state house and our state senate. We need a moderate group who's listening to both sides of the argument to pass gun safety legislation. Um, because Michigan is also one of the most gerrymandered states in the country, we've had issues with politicians pushing division rather than compromise. I'm looking forward to the next few years because the voters of Michigan passed a referendum in 2018 to fix gerrymandering, which create, will create fairer districts and bring people back to the moderate middle and encourage politicians to have the courage to pass gun safety laws. And finally, here in Michigan, we have phenomenal partners in the gun violence prevention space uh, who already see our group as a source of education on firearms and proper training. So I'm really looking forward to making Michigan the next big Giffords for gun safety state. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, thank you. That was really, really helpful. We're really excited um, about all the work to come in Michigan, um, all the work to come in Wisconsin and Virginia over the next few months and, and many other states that I'm sure we're gonna be expanding to um, as we approach 2021. Um, I'm gonna pivot back to Texas, right? You know. You know, we can't ignore the elephant in the room, right? We're a few weeks away from um, a really historical election. Um, many people have that front and mind of center. And, and I want to ask, you know, Shannon, about that. You know, early voting started in Texas uh, earlier this week on Tuesday. And, and Shannon, Texans are heading to the polls. So what would you share with them to consider as they are making their decisions for who to vote for? Thank you, Sheila. Yes, we were actually really lucky the governor extended the early voting period so Texans can vote safely during the pandemic. We can vote early for another 15 days until October 30th. One thing I'd like to encourage viewers to consider is a candidate's stance on universal background checks. It is the most agreed upon bipartisan step in helping to reduce gun violence. Unfortunately, have a very recent Texas example as to why this policy is so important. Last year, August 31st, 2019, a gunman went on a shooting spree in far west Texas through two cities, Midland and Odessa. My dad is actually from Midland. The shooter killed seven and wounded 25. One of the injured was a 17-month-old baby who was hit with a bullet fragment in her face and had to have surgery to remove shrapnel from her chest. 
I'm sure Vic can tell us more about how that is, but I cannot even imagine how horrific that was for her, her mother, or even her family. The gun used in that shooting was purchased in a private, sometimes called person-to-person -person sale, where a background check is not required. Many people may not know this, but the shooter actually failed a background check in 2014. He should never have had a gun. The US Department of Justice study uh, published last year showed that 80% of guns used in crime are acquired this way. Private street transactions, people selling guns online, transfers between friends and associates. The background check system is meant to ensure individuals purchasing guns are allowed to do so. But this is a loophole. It's a workaround in the system and it allows someone to commit this tragedy in Texas. I wanna change that and most gun owners agree with me and members of the general public too. A Giffords poll released recently showed nearly eight out of 10 Texas voters support universal background checks. Voters want a background check on every gun sale, every time. So my vote will only go to candidates who support these kind of policies. They make sense. They will listen to constituent, constituents. They will look at the data as um, John mentioned, and they're gonna work to help make Texas safer and prevent another Midland Odessa. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Shannon. Um, you know, that that makes a lot of sense. And, and hopefully, you know, the gun owners that are watching, you know, folks that are in Texas or in other states, you know, listen to that advice, right? If gun violence prevention and gun safety is an issue that is near and dear to your heart, then you should vote that way. And you should vote for candidates that are going to push that issue um, uh, towards common sense gun ownership. Um, so, all right, we're gonna transition back to Vic in Colorado. Uh, we talked a little bit about safe storage, um, but Vic, safe storage is important to you as a parent and a veteran. It's also likely to come up in the 2021 Colorado legislative session that's gonna begin in a few months. Can you explain the importance of Colorado passing a safe storage bill and the work that Colorado gun owners for safety have done around the issue? Sure. You know, during this worldwide pandemic, all Americans are being called on to change our behavior for safety and well-being of vulnerable populations, societies as a whole. So let this serve as a renewed call to gun owners to do the same with regards to their firearms. Safely storing firearms will protect vulnerable populations during the pandemic and in the, and in the foreseeable future, long after COVID-19 has been contained. When we talk about safe gun storage, we're talking about limiting access to guns by unauthorized users, including minors and thieves. Generally speaking, it means locking guns in a secure place, such as a gun safe, a cabinet, or using a locking device such as a trigger lock or a cable lock. As responsible gun owners, we have an inherent responsibility to ensure that our firearms are safely secured when not in use. The most secure way to store firearms, as recommend, recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics, is to store them unloaded, locked, and set from ammunition. As I mentioned before, Giffords Gun Owners for Safety is centered around responsible gun ownership, focusing on training and education. That's why in January, our group here in Colorado spent four days at the Sportsman Expo in Denver. We passed out gun locks to over 750 people that wanted to be able to uh, have gun locks. We spent our time educating and enforcing the need to ensure that those firearms are safe we stored when not in use. Additionally, we frequently partner with gun violence prevention groups such as Moms to Man Action, who also pass out gun locks for free to any of those gun owners that are in need. As we look to build a coalition across 50 states, each state has various gun laws. As it relates to Colorado, Colorado does not require a locking device to accompany a sale of a firearm. We see this as an opportunity to pass what we believe is a sensible change in our current state legislation. Data shows that during a crisis, easy access, to easy access to guns significantly increase the risk of death by suicide. Studies also demonstrate that the risk of suicide among minors is significantly higher in homes where guns are kept loaded and unlocked. And tragically, as mentioned before, the youth firearm suicide has been on a rise in recent years. Suicides by firearms is an impulsive act. Securing firearms have been proven to save lives and prevent suicides. So those are some of the reasons why safe 
storage is important, not only in Colorado, but all of the United States. Thank you for sharing that, Vic. And, and you know, thank you for taking us back to January. I was actually in Denver with Vic and with, uh, you know, a number of other members of Colorado Gun Owners for Safety. And I watched, you know, folks interact and, and, and learn about safe storage. And, and, you know, people were eager to get free gun locks. And, and, you know, sometimes it's about access. It's about giving people an opportunity to learn more so that they can provide safety. So when I, I think that's a great example of ways that, you know, states and, and, and potential new members um, can get involved in a very direct way. Um, all right, so we're going to go back to Michigan and, and chat with John for a little bit. Um, you know, this is something that is, uh, you know, kind of current events. Uh, Michigan is kind of currently center stage in national news uh, as the details unfold about the foiled kidnapping plot of your governor. You know, at the heart of the controversy is this issue of this armed vigilante, right? This armed individual that's using guns to provoke violence and influence politics in the middle of a national state and local elections. So why should gun owners speak out against this sort of intimidation and violence, John? I want to I want to preface this with something and that's that armed intimid armed intimidation has no place in the American political process. When I first started in the gun violence prevention movement, it, my first episode was to testify in Lansing, and I certainly didn't need to carry a loaded rifle to make my point. Uh, in a COVID-related Open the State protest last spring, the event was attended by armed militia in full battle gear, carrying semi-automatic rifles and sidearms. The protest had nothing to do with gun rights, no firearms policy was being debated, but they felt it necessary to use armed intimidation against legislators. It turns out that a few of those same protesters were also involved in the conspiracy to kidnap Governor Whitmer. Responsible gun owners and sportsmen and sportswomen, collectors, and people who want to protect themselves and their loved ones from harm aren't armed vigilantes looking to subvert or replace law enforcement in due process. This isn't the old West. Do we really want armed groups running around our streets enforcing their brand of justice instead of the law? The history, the other thing I want to emphasize is that the history of vigilantism and the notions, very notion of vigilante justice is a scary one that has deeply bigoted and racist roots. Um, law enforcement has a hard enough job to do without having to deal with armed incursions from civilians and not being sure exactly who the good or bad guys are. And as responsible gun owners, we need to support those who protect and serve and those who act to promote the public safety. Thank you, thank you, thank you, John. I think that's that's really timely, your remarks, considering that, you know, we have elections that have already started, you know, in, in states like Texas and, and, and early voting that's gonna just trickle down towards the election day in a few weeks. So that. Um, we're gonna uh, transition back to Colorado and we're gonna talk to Whitney for a few minutes. You know, Whitney, background checks passed in Colorado back in 2013. That seems like ages ago at this point. Um, in 2021, a federal universal background check bill will be introduced again. What would you say to senators and congresswomen and men in your plea for them to pass a federal universal background check bill? Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous that we don't have universal background checks at the federal level already. I mean, over 90% of Americans support them. The vast majority of gun owners support them. Even the vast majority of NRA members support them. So there's really no excuse not to pass a federal universal background check bill. Um, Americans have said again and again, it's what we want. And yeah, here in Colorado, we've had universal background checks since 2013 um, and it's been great here. But um, the problem is, the problem always is that if Wyoming doesn't have uh, background checks or any other neighboring state, all someone has to do is just cross state lines and then they can bypass that background check. So really until we can get it at the federal level, it's really not gonna be effective in the same way, but it's so necessary. I agree with Whitney completely. You know, if I can leave you with just one message today, that is to vote for elective officials that are committed to sensible gun legislation, such as my friend and neighbor, Jason Crow. Congressman Crow is a dedicated combat veteran and a father he understands the reality of firearm related strategies that across all across our country. Representative Crow supports common sense gun measures like background checks that Whitney was talking about 
which over 90% of Americans do support. His vote was key to the House bill passing HR 8 and bipartisan background check bills in 2019. Congressman Crow could not be here with us today. However, he did send a video message to gun owners out there that want to get more, to be more active and more involved. Hi everybody, it's Jason Crow here. All too often our communities have felt the pain and the horror of gun violence. As a country, the US has more mass shootings than any other developed nation. And as a father, I've seen my own daughter have to deal with school shooting drills. Yet when a crisis hits, leaders in Washington who have the power to change what's going on offer only their thoughts and their prayers. Well, you'll always have my thoughts and prayers, but you deserve more. You deserve and you need action. Gun ownership has always been a part of who we are in America. It's a fundamental right enshrined in our Constitution. And I respect the Second Amendment and our heritage of responsible gun ownership, but I learned while serving our country that citizenship also comes with duties to our fellow citizens. One of these duties is to ensure that our fellow citizens can live without fear and safely pursue their dreams and ambitions. Assault weapons like the ones that I carried in Iraq and Afghanistan have no place in our community. Yet right now, they're just far too easy for everyday citizens to get. We need common sense gun violence laws like universal background checks in order to close loopholes and hold the gun industry accountable. So I'm proud to work with the Giffords Gun Owners for Safety to find those common sense solutions that will save lives and preserve our rights. We can and must do both. Let us be the generation who has the courage to stand up to the gun lobby and special interests and do the right thing to protect our children and our community. Thank you, Congressman Crow, for those remarks. Um, you know, we really appreciate you sending that and, 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 and making sure that you are directing your remarks at Giffords Gun Owners for Safety and prospective members of, of Giffords Gun Owners for Safety. We know that you've been a leader on the issue of gun violence prevention, and we look forward to continuing to work with you as we recruit more gun owners across the country. And, and Congressman Crow is absolutely correct, right? Like we need common sense gun laws like universal background checks in order to close the loopholes and hold the gun industry accountable. That's the only way that we're going to be able to reduce gun violence and save lives across the United States. It's simple. Um, so anyway, now I'm going to turn things back over to our fearless leader, former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords, who's going to provide some closing remarks for Giffords Gun Owners for Safety National Launch. I've known the darkest of days, days of pain and uncertain recovery. But confronted by despair, I've summoned hope. Confronted by paralysis, and aphasia, I respond with grit and determination. I put one foot in front of the other. I found one word and then I found another. My recovery is a daily fight, but fighting makes me stronger. Words once came easily, today I struggle to speak, but I've not lost my voice. American needs all of us to speak out, even when you have to fight to find the words. I'm also in a second fight, the fight to stop gun violence. It's also a fight forged by tragedy and pain, a fight where hard work pays off, a fight that can change lives. We are at a crossroads. We can let the shooting continue, or we can act. We can protect our families, our future. We can vote. We can be on the right side of history. Please join us in this fight. Vote, vote, vote. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Gabby. I mean, it's such an honor for all of us and for all of the viewers, all of the people that are listening, dialed in to hear from you, to hear from you twice today. Um, you know, your remarks are inspiring to all of us and, and, and hopefully will help us move the needle on gun safety laws. Um, you know, I think 
you know, what I would say to everyone out there that's listening, that's in a state that, you know, has not been mentioned, right? You know, we have gun violence. Uh, we have uh, Giffords Gun Owners for Safety chapters that are active in Texas and Minnesota and Colorado. We have new chapters that are um, becoming active in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Virginia. You know, if you're not in one of those six states and you want to get involved, then get involved, right? Like get out there, you know, register to vote, actually vote, actually hold your elected officials accountable, right? You know, you know where the state house is, you know that there are, you know, going to be bills that are going to be proposed in 2021. And you have every right to engage and to have dialogue with the individuals that are going to be making the decisions that are going to affect your lives. If you're a parent out there and you have kids and they're going to school and they're doing lockdown drills. If you are a student that's in school and you're doing lockdown drills, this affects your life. If you're just an average citizen that's going into a grocery store, going into a public public place, this is an issue that actually affects us all, no matter where you live, no matter you know what your lived experience and your background is, right? And, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to cultivate a group of individuals that are going to make it a safe space for common sense gun owners. And we know that there are thousands and, and millions of individuals out there that agree with us. And we know that if we build an infrastructure that is organized, that we can get those individuals involved and then we can get the elected officials to do the right thing. And so I'm really excited that we were able to do all of this with everyone today. You know, If you'd like to join us in the fight to reduce gun violence, if something that was said today either by Gabby or by one of the gun owners in Texas and Colorado or in Michigan, if that speaks to you, if that resonates to you, then please, please, please text gun owner to 34131. Again, 34131. Um, if you'd like to get more involved in an already established chapter, if you wanna to speak to somebody at Giffords about what that process would look like, what that infrastructure would look like, please email us at gun owners, for, gun owners excuse me, at giffords.org. Again, the email address is gunowners at giffords.org. We're here to serve you all. We're here to provide a safe space for diverse uh, individuals who are gun owners to have relevant conversations about laws and legislation that's gonna actually affect their lives. And so, you know, I'm really excited to bring everyone together today. I think that this was a fantastic event. So thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for giving us time on this Friday. And, and we're so excited to launch our national coalition of Giffords Gunners for Safety. We hope to hear from all of you soon. Have a great Friday and have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you.